What's up, Buck? I'm Doug. This is where you're supposed to say, and I'm Jojo. You're fired. Ugh, it's hard to find good help. This is Danny in the garage. Today we're going to tackle a problem that a lot of people have on four-wheel drive vehicles. It's binding during low speed turns. Now that is not something that should happen to a four wheel drive vehicle where in low speed turns you're getting a groaning, a moaning, or you're getting a little feedback in the steering wheel. It usually indicates one piece of the four wheel drive system is on its way out. I have that in my 4.7. I think I know what the problem is, but I'm gonna go through with you all the things to check to determine which piece it is. And now the first thing you have to do is get a good understanding of what your vehicle is equipped with. For instance, this Jeep Grand Cherokee right here, it's a 2001 with the 4.7 and the Quadra drive four wheel drive system. It has a limited slip center differential, AKA transfer case, and then it has Verilock limited slip differentials in the front and the rear. Now another four wheel drive system that uh, you're gonna find in way more of your pickup trucks and your Jeeps is gonna have not all those limited slips and everything. You're gonna have an open differential front, open differential rear, and a selectable transfer case. That's what's in this 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This particular four wheel drive system is Select Track. It's very similar to the Command Track that came in your ZJs and your XJs. And then like Ford and Chevy pickup trucks do stuff like this where you have two wheel drive, four wheel part time, four wheel full time, maybe some other different ones, maybe you don't have all those, and then an open differential front and rear. The key is you have to understand your four wheel drive system before you can diagnose it. Now, if you need even more information, if you're not even understanding what I'm talking about with this, never fear, Doug is here. Got a video right there uh, that I did a number of years ago. It's a little dry, but the information's solid on the four wheel drive systems, the different Jeep transfer cases. Uh, it's, a, it's a good read. All right, friends, it may seem like we're getting a little bit too far in the weeds, but bear with me. I stole the executive producer's sidewalk chalk so we could do a little remediary four wheel drive systems to try to figure out why our vehicle is binding in the tight turns. You got your basic four wheel drive system here. Drive wheels with a differential, steering wheels with a differential, transfer case to split the power between them. Now. On a good day, if I'm trying to bail through the mud bogs or make an escape on some ice, four-wheel drive is going to lock up or I'm going to have it in a full-time, part-time situation so that these are all locked together and I get that good traction. But if I'm just trying to turn around in the Wally World parking lot, I don't want to hear a bump and popping and grinding from my front or middle or even rear uh, in those turns. Now, most likely what's happening not most likely, this is what's happening. You just have to figure out at what spot. Either your front and rear are getting locked together when they shouldn't, or your two front tires are getting locked together when they shouldn't. Uh, additionally, you could also have binding in the rear. That's not my situation, but if you have binding in the rear, it's pretty much always gonna be your rear limited slip has gone and is uh, failing to a point where it's locking them together. Now, if you're driving in an all wheel drive like this, it's got a, a limited slip here and a limited slip there. It could be either of those two points. So what we're gonna do to diagnose that is I'm gonna remove my front drive shaft and drive around. If I remove my front drive shaft, and, and this is possible on a 247 transfer case like this Jeep here. If you remove your front drive shaft and the problem goes away, that tells you it's not this differential because that one's still connected to both of its uh, outputs. It's this one, all right? If I disconnect my front drive shaft and it doesn't go away, then it was not my transfer case, it's my wheels. Now what I'm hoping is that I disconnect it and it goes away because I already have a new transfer case for this Jeep uh, because I wanted to swap it to something else. Uh, but if it doesn't go away, then it means my differential right there has gone bad. Now, why might you have it if you're not in an all wheel drive? If you're in something like that select track where you decide what to put it in, most likely, you, uh, for whatever reason, it's not in the gear that you think it is. Now, this actually happens to me all the time in that Jeep that we were sitting in. Um, I, I have it in full time four. I'm out there having fun in the mud or something. And then I slam it up into two wheel drive and I drive away thinking I'm good to go. And I go to turn and I hear an awful pop and grind and moan and it sounds like the whole house is about to come down. What happens, especially in that 242, if you have an XJ, ZJ, or WJ with the 242 transfer case, that's gonna be your select track. Uh, they like to get hung up in part time and sometimes you just have to go back and forth a couple times try rolling at a slow speed uh, Additionally, maybe your linkage is broken or unfortunately there could be something wrong inside your transfer case So if you have a selectable transfer case where you decide whether it's in two-wheel or four-wheel or whatever And it's uh, grinding first make sure that it's actually in that gear try sliding it back and forth a couple times Try um, I find with that one if I go forward at a low speed and put it in like right at five miles an hour it, It's good to go make sure that yours is shift on the fly before you try that uh, some Toyotas and uh, Fords and Chevys are not shift on the fly a lot of these with the manual uh, Selectable Selectomatic 3000 uh, they are absolutely shift on the fly so 
Let's get under this 4.7, see if we can't pull this drive shaft and hope that the problem goes away because then it's just the transfer case that I already have sitting there in the garage. Now, depending on the vehicle you're working on, there's a variety of different ways to connect axles to transfer cases and differentials. Uh, a lot of the Spicer Dana axles are either going to use a 3.8 or an 8 millimeter or a T25 to hold them on. Uh, some GM and Ford applications may use other stuff, but the, the trick's going to be all the same. And make sure you chalk the wheel so you don't run the dog over. Then go ahead and jimmy jam that bad boy into neutral. Put the vehicle in neutral, then put the transfer case in neutral. Voila. Then get at least one wheel off the ground. Now you'll notice with the one tire off the ground, you can spin the wheel and it will spin the shaft so you can get to all of the bolts. Again, on this Jeep with the 4.7, it is a T25 hex back here and around 8 mils back here. Find that time like this under the Jeep is a good time for reflection. Like, hey, that brake line looks like it's going to break soon and what in the hell is this leak about? The kind of stuff you can take note of, make a list, and then promptly ignore so that you can afford a lift and bigger tires. Really though, what is that leak from? <laughs> I'm thinking my output shaft on my transfer case is no more, which very well could be the problem there. I checked the fluid a little bit ago, like when I bought it, and it was fine. Maybe I just drove it without any fluid. Amateur hour. All right, one more bolt. Turn and Z. Come on. There we go. And then this guy will be free. And then we can take a little test drive. It's worth noting that not all vehicles can be run without the front drive shaft in. In some cases, it'll do damage to the transfer case. In some cases, it just won't go anywhere. Uh, for instance, if you put um, an XJ, no, sorry, like a WJ in full time mode without the drive shaft, then it's not going to go anywhere because uh, power wants to follow the path of least resistance and if there's no drive shaft that's so sure it sounds like no resistance to me let's go get the front out of this thing and it'll be good to go now the front's kind of a pain in the butt because it you can't uh, there's not enough torque to get them out with the drive shaft oh excuse me with the tire off the ground so what you got to do is jimmy jam two of them into place drop in zz jack just enough to get some pressure on the tire and then wiggle waggle those spinny boys out come on get it okay What do you say we give work smarter, not harder a shot? Oh my god. That was way easier. What the hell was I doing? Buddy Buck, I'll tell you what, it's hotter than a 4.7 with a bad power steering pump out today. It is thick. There's a lot of atmosphere in the air. Let's get the jack back up. Lift and Z, lift and Z, lift and Z. Push your back. Slurp two more into position. I think that'll do. Down, Klaus. Und three. Und four. Now, get to wiggling. Oh, I better move you guys. You're going to get hit with a drive shaft. All right, this is the part of the show where the BFH makes an appearance. Uh, two things to note. Before you go whaling on your vehicle, maybe just put it back in park. We don't need it in neutral anymore. Additionally, if you plan to save your drive shaft, or if this is just for a test, you're going to put it back in or whatever, be mindful of these cups on your U-joint. They like to uh, not come out cleanly. Now, <laughs> like 99.9% .9 of the Jeeps I've ever seen have bad U-joints, so... If you're doing this, this may be a good opportunity to uh, change your U-joints. I have a video on it. It's it's up there, but buyer beware. It's like our third video. It's like 20 minutes long for no reason. Whatever. Uh, but it does properly show you how to change a U-joint without a press. Now I'm going to try to gently tickle these. Oh, there we go. Front's out. Pull her back. Drop her down. Back's out. And you're free. We officially have made our Jeep two-wheel drive. Great. All right, friends, you will notice that this U-joint's actually not that shot out. Uh, this Jeep's got 140,000 miles. I have no reason to believe this is not the original U-joints. They came out, they didn't stick. 
if these caps come out, there's a bunch of needle bearings in there, they will evacuate, go everywhere, and you will never get them back in. So if you need this thing to be your daily driver, get to work tomorrow, and you're just doing this as a test, have a spare U-joint sit in there, you're probably gonna need it. All right, friends, you don't really need two dogs for the test drive, but I kind of suggest it. It's actually my advice for most Jeep. Oh, the chocks. The chocks are still in. I do that every time I chalk something. I'll be right back. Amateur hour. As I was saying, I find most Jeep repairs go better if you have at least two dogs staring at you while you att uh, attempt them. Oh, I ran over something. What did I leave out there? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find a spot down here at the end of the lane where a uh, nice tight place to turn around. We'll see if it binds up. I'll tell you one thing. It feels, it's got better throttle response without that drive shaft in there, which leads me to believe it was locked up and trying to spin all four tires at all times. That, my friends, is what we in the business call a result. Tight turns. Oh, she glides. It's like a figure skater on ice. Interesting. Let's go down. Let's try a little more. So, I think those two things put together tell me that my transfer case is on the way out. Uh, I could rebuild it, but I already have the other one. I'm switching from a 247 to a 242. I have a whole video. It was a whole thing. Go check the card if you want to know about that. Um, how to swap transfer cases in these Jeeps and why you might swap transfer cases in these Jeeps. But those two things, the fact that the throttle response immediately got better and the fact that uh, it doesn't, it was like this groaning sound. And what I think was happening was the transfer cases internal mechanism was locking up and then the, the uh, inertia of the Jeep was overcoming it uh, in a pretty rough way. I'll bet you if I drain that fluid, there's uh, potentially metal shavings or, or worse um, sitting in there. So that's that's all very interesting to me. Uh, kind of a shame. I wonder if it was a preventable situation. It looks like that rear output shaft cone on the transfer case was leaking. Uh, it was not leaking when I bought it, uh, so uh, whatever. Let's get back to the ranch. We'll talk about a few more things, and I'll get you fine folks on to the next video. Ooh, buddy buck, I'll tell you what. So that's really all there is to it. Like I said, if you don't fully understand all the components in your four-wheel drive system, you're not really going to be able to diagnose this. So that is your first step, figuring out what is in each of those things. If you have a more all-wheel drive or full-time four like mine, it's probably one of those limited slip mechanisms uh, failing closed on you. Uh, if you do not, then it's probably something mechanical in your transfer case. Or I've found a lot of the time when I have uh, 242, 231, those type of transfer cases, and they're binding, it just didn't fully engage into two-wheel drive out of part-time. 99% of the time. Uh, so check that stuff. Uh, if you have like a 247 like mine, you can pull the front drive shaft. If you have a different one, uh, you can leave a comment down there in the squawk boxes. We'll try to find out for you whether or not you can run without a front drive shaft. After that, Belk, that's about all there is to it. Nothing really else to say. Leave us that comment down there in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video. That's common sense. Consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe even check us out over on Etsy. We got some cool stuff uh, coming over there. A lot of you have been asking for hats. They're coming. And a lot of you have been asking for hoodies. It's 95 degrees right now. I'm not making hoodies right now. But in the fall, a uh, full line of d &E hoodies are coming along with Eric's, Eric's annual uh, Christmas sweater. So check us out over there on Etsy. Maybe even follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we put all of our projects and stuff up there. And it's just, it's a darn good time. The d and &E community on Instagram and Facebook and even here, man, second to none, 10 out of 10. All right, so I'm going to finish this video. I got something very special going on in the backyard. A lot of you know, first love family, second love. Collecting rusty, dusty, crusty pieces of garbage like these third love barbecue baby ugly drum smokers are rolling Let's see what we got chickens at oh it's running a little low today chickens right almost done 157 like ozzy osborne said swine is fine but chickens quicker <whistles> buddy buck i tell you what all right i gotta go eat these